formal meeting back to order. Technically, my fourth meeting this morning. Yesterday, very briefly, we conquered. And, um, so, I did um, contact him and asked him if he would just quickly go over, um, give us a, just a quick tutorial from our, our freshman members about what we're doing today and, and why, because it's really pretty important. Um, so, I thought I would ask him to just go over it just briefly so that those of us in the room will understand. Sure. Thank you. And, um, so today we're here to finalize the uh, 2019 budget. Um, we've uh, gone over all the expenditures, we've gone over all the revenues, um, and uh, we're at a place now where we need to decide um, what we're going to do about taxes. Um, and that's the only thing left to do is income from taxes, and if, if any monies will be used from fund balance to offset that tax. Um, Kathy uh, sent uh, all of you uh, scenarios of uh, what the tax increase may be, if there is any, uh, from using uh, um, established fund balance, uh, and that's on the, uh, on the sheet that's got, it, it looks like this. Yes. <clears throat> um, if we don't use any fund balance, the budget will be up 14.7%. Uh, the increase uh, per, per, per thousand is, uh, is about 15 to 20 cents. Um, if we use 500,000 surplus to reduce taxes, uh, the increase will be 12 to 16 cents, and so on. Uh, 859, 499 is what we were talking about at the, at the March uh, 11th meeting, um, and if we use 859-499, the, the budget will be up 9.5%. The total raised by taxes will be 18,091,235, uh, which will be about a 10 to 13 cent increase per thousand. Um, the <laughs> Don't feel like paranoid. <laughs> yeah. The uh, so that's where we are. Um, we had some discussion with DRA about Hale's location. Uh, we for the last two days have gone over it with them. They uh, the uh, uh, the municipal supervisor and the assistant commissioner. Uh, went over it on Wednesday, I mean on Tuesday, today's Thursday on Tuesday. Uh, they sent it up to legal, sent it over to revenue side. Uh, they still don't have a definitive answer, but they did say that uh, for this year to utilize RSA 287A, which is, um, if you can take that Madam Chair, that's your copy says that uh, the county convention may at any legal meeting grant and vote such sums of money as they judge necessary for any purpose for which the county may act if such appropriation is not prohibited by laws or by the constitution of the state. Um, and we discussed incorporating Hale's location budget with the county budget when the commissioners presented at their public hearing in December. Therefore, um, even if it doesn't need a public hearing, the public hearing is done alongside with the county budget, thus knocking uh, two birds with one stone. Uh, that was their recommendation. They don't have, they, they feel that it's not really identified in the RSA that it needs a public hearing because there's no public body to actually, I mean, there, there's no moderator, there's no there's no anyone there, so they're having a tough time trying to figure this one out. Um, so that's where we are with Hales. Uh, you'll, you'll be voting on that today as well. Um, and that's about where we are. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I spoke with the treasurer, who's also the treasurer for Hales, 
and he did not feel that a public meeting was necessary. And he also sends his apologies because he was called out of town today. Yes. Yes, I uh, wanted to just add before we moved off the subject of surplus use to reduce taxes. I, I did ask Kent to work out the figures for 859 <coughs> because that would reduce the fund balance to the minimum amount that DRA okay, considers that appropriate. And I personally would uh, oppose any effort to use more than that because I don't think we should reduce our fund balance right. to less than what DRA considers I, appropriate. I wasn't looking for a recommendation at this point. I just wanted us to have an idea, some of the new people, uh, what we were doing and why. I, I think we need to go down to the, look at some other issues of the budget and make sure we're, we're settled with what the bottom line is, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, but that was actually yes, what my question was. I was going to pose it more as a question. I just wanted to make sure that if these are the numbers we're looking at, it would not put us below the fund balance of 3.3 because we do want to abide by the recommendation. So <coughs> I think it's still germane to the discussion right now about why we choose that number. Thank you. Well, I had also asked the question about Hales because I didn't know where we were with mm, Hales yeah. and what we needed to do. So yeah, I had asked those two questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, are there any questions of the process? Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I don't know who you are. Oh, Paula Coates, Director of Finance at the Nursing Home. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yes, a new face. Did you over it? You've been here 30 years, years. Yes. but for some of us, it's a new face. <laughs> Would you like to be introduced to some of the people who are on the... So um, I would like to start with talking the budget. Um, first, are there any <coughs> issues with the, with the overall budget? We've approved most most of it with as far as we have come, but there are some questions about things that we might that people might want to add, change, or look at before we take the final look. Representative for that. Thank you. Um, yes, I have uh, overall concerns uh, about the budget. Um, and we're looking at an over 12.4% uh, increase in spending from what was spent in 2018. I think that is uh, excessive. Um, uh, and um, that does not uh, include the, um, there might be some uh, adjustments to the capital expenditure uh, line um, that we can discuss today. It also does not include um, HR director and a finance um, manager, which I believe are critical um, positions that need to be included in this budget um, when it is cash, passed right away so that we can start discussions on uh, the hiring process for those positions. Um, these positions were recommended um, back in the 2014 performance audit um, we had both positions. Um, we have neither right now. And I think that over the past few years, we have seen um, repeated demonstrated need for both positions. Um, so I would, in terms of changes, I would like to make a motion, if I could, um, to um, um, reduce the overall budget to $31,419,444 and all associated uh, line uh, appropriations um, in the budget, um, which is the 2018 budget levels. Um, I'll second it for discussion. Okay, we'll second it for discussion. Yes, and Madam Chair, so um, is it your intention, Representative, 
Cordelia, I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that we should go back to the 2018 appropriation levels? Correct. And may I ask a couple of follow-up questions? Okay, so are you also suggesting that we adjust our revenue projections back or just the appropriations? Um, I can take a look at the current. Uh, I think that the... Uh, Your motion was just for... My motion was just on the expenditures. Um, I haven't... Uh, I need to take a look at these revenue numbers. Okay, and one more follow-up, please. And that would be... Um, so are you suggesting that given that some things cost more now than they did a year ago, that we should cut back on um, services or staff or um, other areas? In other words, we can't... You know, are you suggesting that we cut back on our electrical use, on our, our propane use, on our food, on our staffing, on everything um, uh, to, to adjust for that? No, I don't believe uh, that would be necessary. Our actual expenditures for last year were uh, 29417724 which is um, approximately $2 million below um, what I've suggested as the budget amount uh, for uh, 2019. Yes, Mr. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I guess this is a test, uh, question for Ken. Uh, if you looked at all the raises and things like that, is there enough money to cover the raises and the personnel costs to meet commitments? Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea what that amount might be? Uh, not, not, no, not off the top of my head. I don't. But I know it's um, it's close to uh, with with the uh, with the LNAs, the sheriff raises, all the contract raises. It's probably close to nine hundred thousand, maybe. That would include the adjustments for retirement and things like that, the, the rates of retirement? No, the, 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 that's just the raises themselves, not, not, not the ancillary costs. I just wanted to follow up. So I just want to understand what you're saying. So you're saying that $900,000 in raises are not incorporated into this budget? No, it is. Oh, it is. But okay. if it cuts it down to, to $31 million, it's not. Okay. <clears throat> It, and the ancillary costs would be probably in the order of about thirty percent or so. If uh, uh, for group two, it's twenty nine percent. But uh, group one, it's eleven point three eight percent just for retirement. Yeah, but um, I mean the, f the full picture for all the benefits, closer to thirty roughly. With uh, how, just yeah. ballpark. Yeah. yeah. So nine hundred. So it would really be about one point two million or something like that. That I would assume also we have the capital expenses of the capital things that we have passed. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, do the figures that you were just um, giving us do those refer to non-negotiated, you know, salaries and, and um, compensation that was not negotiated with the union, or would that mean that we would have to go back on? whatever the agreement with the union was. We'd probably have to go back and, and renegotiate. Okay. And Madam Chair, just as a point of order, would I just ask that Representative Cordelli's motion be repeated so that Representative Butler can get some context? Thank you. Yes. That's very good. Thank you. Representatives, motion was to reduce the budget to $31,419,444 which would reflect the 2018 budget. Um, I was just going to say I agree with Representative Cordelli that the two positions that were outlined in the audit are critical. Um, I think they need to be funded. I would have an issue with reduce, uh, reducing the raises that we that are incorporated in the budget. So my question for Representative Cordelli is where, the, where he would see, if, if we cut back, where those $2 million cuts would come from. Two million dollars. You're saying if we reduce the budget back, right? Um, uh, I believe that since um, it is approximately two million dollars um, left from what was spent, excuse me, yeah, the expenditures for 2018, the actual expenditures were approximately two million dollars less 
than um, the uh, budgeted amount for 2018 and what was being proposed for 19. Um, so I think that there is, uh, there was uh, room for um, negotiated salaries to be added, and I, I would um, also uh, would be very much open to uh, amending my motion to um, add in both the um, director positions, um, and I have some information on, on those positions. also that most of us are on budget committees have been selectmen and if you went to your town and asked for a 12.4 percent raise in your budget would you get that that's the main concern I have and uh, I think it's going to be hard to explain to the public why it's up so much and that's the concern that I have Mr. Madam Chair, I'd be really happy to reduce this budget uh, but I want to do it responsibly and for me, that means that I have to figure out what requests we heard that we feel we no longer want to support. Because every line item in this budget was gone over by more than one person, by the commissioners, by the more than one person on the delegation subcommittees and then by the full delegation, and every line item was agreed to that it was a necessary pur purpose, even if not 100% of us all agreed to every line. So I really think to res budget responsibly, we have to say, which of these things that we thought were so essential do we now think that we can't really afford to do? And I'm willing to spend as much time as is needed to do that. Um, I would start um, in response to the good uh, representative's comment um, with the uh, eight new positions. I think we did receive yes, a list of mm -hmm. those positions. And I think, I believe, have some of those already been filled? No. They have not been yet filled. Could I ask, uh, could I ask, Representative Fidelli, which particular ones, or is he suggesting that they all go? Um, I, I would, uh, I would not object to keeping the uh, investigator um, in the county attorney's office, um, or uh, I would also, and I should say, would also be open to keeping the uh, victim's witness advocate, which I consider a very important position. As a follow-up, then, um, what question I have, the, the idea in your mind would be that the HR position would subsume the HR assistant in the nursing home and make that unnecessary, and the finance manager would subsume the administrative assistant, or, or what? Uh, exactly. Okay. Um, and to, Oh, sorry, oh, yeah, please. Um, in 2016, um, we had uh, three positions, um, and I believe that's what's recommended in the uh, current draft performance audit the finance manager, um, controller, and um, uh, administrative assistant. Um, that would be the three remaining um, in this budget. Um, and uh, also in 2016, we actually had two positions in human resources. Um, that was the HR director 
and a generalist. Um, we are now currently at four, with fifth being proposed for payroll slash human resources. Um, so, uh, yeah, I will definitely see these two director of manager positions um, replacing the uh, requested uh, new positions in those areas. Follow up, please. Yes. I thought that one of the difficulties we had was getting the data in time, for example, for the audit and closing the books and reconciling the um, uh, bank accounts, which we found in the audit, were way behind. I had to do with the fact that we did not have the finance administrative assistant that was needed. So I, it would seem like we would be right back to that same position without, that same problem, I should say, without that position. I, I think that um, with the three positions, um, we would be in line with other counties in terms of staffing, um, as pointed out in the performance audit. And uh, I don't recall a problem um, along those areas, or maybe we weren't aware of the problem in the past when we had those three positions in the office. Um, again, I'm just still concerned we're way, you know, in terms of the $2 million, we're still, you know, far away from that. And um, I, I think my principal concern after reading that audit is with the, the six month time frame it was taking to reconcile. So I would see, I, I don't see a financial manager doing reconciliation. I would see that as being a job of an administrative assistant, not a, not a manager. Mr. Robichaud. So we currently have a finance manager. Um, her name is Kathy Armstrong. Um, Kathy is the one that's been doing it since I've been there. We had a finance director who was inefficient. Um, we had, we currently have uh, a bookkeeper slash administrative assistant. We have Kathy, who's our controller finance manager, and that's all we have in that office. We had a finance director, we had a controller, we had a bookkeeper, we had an administrative assistant, and we had a and and we had a um and a, a payroll benefits uh, administrator, all at the same time. Um, was, the, was the payroll benefits administrator was that in the in the office of the um, yes HR director? No, no. But we have haven't we pushed out some of the responsibilities of the HR person to people within other workers within each department. We have one HR person who is our benefits, uh, who, who's our payroll person now. So she also is that's a financial position. Well, I'm sorry? It's a financial position. Currently, it's, it, it, she works in the payroll, and she does HR for that building, for the admin building. Okay. We have a, uh, a part-time person in the jail who's the administrative assistant who does a HR uh, duties as well. And in this building, we have an HR person that does strictly HR, um, who is um, uh, who is swamped with work. Um, there's 185 employees here for that one HR person. When we did have two HR people, staff had to leave this building on their break or after work to go over to that office. HR was never in this building. Um, it would not address the needs of this building. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't know uh, why we need a, an HR person for a building. Um, this building is not far from the administrative um, office building. Um, I do not think it's a hardship to ask, uh, to ask someone to walk to another building. There are plenty of people who uh, come from the administrative o a building over here for lunch. I don't think that that is an extreme hardship. Um, there were two people in the past, and they performed an HR function. I don't think we have an HR function now. With all the problems we have seen, um, with people leaving and so forth, we don't know why people are leaving because exit interviews are not being done. Has, that, that recommendation goes back to 2014. 
Um, so uh, I do not think that we have an HR function by, by someone who is a trained HR director, professional. <laughs> I know it's so easy to um, to make a determination from the outside when you're not actually involved in the operation. Um, it, it, it seems that you know we need this, we need that. Um, I think the people who 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 actually work in the building um, can understand that an HR person is needed in the building to have their uh, finger on the pulse of what's going on in the building to be. To be across the street and know and, and pretend to know what's going on is, um, you know, I, I don't understand how how you can even say that when when no one's really experiencing but us. I mean, you can ask Paula, who works in this building, of 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 how how much it's changed since since the HR person has been in this building. Um, I think I think I don't want to all of that at this point. I think that that what the performance of the people have seen is the umbrella to look at and review policies to be a person that people can go to if they have an issue, to to do the, the oversight of the personnel issues. And I think we have had lots of very valuable employees and there have been some issues that perhaps had we had an HR person suggesting a professional who could work on some of these issues that maybe we would save a lot. It cost us money every time we lose long-term quality. Even, even when we had an HR director, people were leaving. I well, mean, I'm sure there's, there's always an issue, but, right. but from some of the problems that have come up, I think that it might. But that's you know, how, how we lay out things. That there, I see there's also some value of having somebody local that people can go to. But I think that obviously the people who did the performance audit found some things that they feel need addressing. And we need to look at those. Unfortunately, we don't have that, that in front of us yet, that final report. But I have seen the drafts, and there are, they did pick up some very serious concerns. And I think we paid, invested all that money in having this done. I think we need to take the time to look at it seriously. So, um, yes? Thank you. Uh, I would just, uh, like to mention that uh, I spent uh, 10 or 12 years working in a very large medical center in uh, New York with uh, 3,500 um, employees. Uh, and we had one HR department located in one building, not even in the center of campus. And um, we managed to uh, do fairly well. Yes. Uh, I apologize for being late and uh, thank Representative Kansler for being later so that uh, <laughs> I, I don't feel as guilty. Um, and uh, just to update Representative Kanzler, uh, and uh, uh, motion has been or it has been suggested that we reduce the budget uh, by a couple million dollars. And um, although I understand the, uh, the challenge relative to 12% increase um, and uh, the statement that uh, no town is going to uh, be comfortable with uh, talking about having such a significant increase. Um, in the past, uh, when we have gotten to this point, there has been a motion to uh, reduce the budget by 2% or 3% or 5%. Um, and that motion has been accepted at some point in the process, towards the end of the process. I'm really uncomfortable with that. Um, I don't want to slash the budget in some uh, uh, wholesale way and ask administration to make those changes. Um, if we are going to be responsible to um, finalize the budget, um, then if I have to go back to the nursing home subcommittee uh, <coughs> meeting and um, look at the budget and say I have to take out a certain amount of money, then I can work with the subcommittee to do that. But I am not going to today um, vote for uh, wholesale um, reductions. I think we can talk about the issues, but 
unless I'm overruled. I'm not willing to do that in, uh, without, as uh, Representative Tyser said, um, details on all of those cuts. I, I agree. I think it's very, very awkward for us in the, in the big picture, not understanding what's going on. If we if I to make cuts, then I think we need to go back to the department heads and find where they feel they best need to be made and not decide to do that. I tend to agree with Representative Butler. I think we developed what we thought was a needs-based budget um, that is we've worked on. And is, budgets are always an approximation of what you think you're going to need, and sometimes there are surprises one way or another. And I don't think it would be wise to restart this entire process all over again. Because this, we've, we've done this work already. I don't think we went at it without thinking about it already. And I think that we should carry on with the budget that we've done, except if we're going to decide to change to an HR, that, that, that's fine. That's, that's, a, that's a change that we're making to personnel that would be, would have budgetary implications. But to just slash it and then hope that we can come up with something, I don't think makes sense personally. Hello. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I agree with um, what um, Representative Kinnard and Butler said. And, you know, this is, I look at this uh, as a county government, but at the same time it's analogous to a 30, 31 to 33 million dollar business. And a cost of business is having people in these functions. And um, I've heard, just in the short time I've been here, I've heard from all the departments about how hard it is for the nursing, uh, it's been for the nursing home to get people because we've been paying below the, the um, average wage, and I think we need to look at the reality of running a business of that size. And I would be uncomfortable just slashing for, because we want to go back to 2010. Thank you, Madam Chair. It would be irresponsible for me to go back to Moultonboro and ask them for four million one hundred if that if we we're going to go to that, or four million three hundred and forty-nine thousand dollars. I'm the one who's got to stand up in front of all of those people and explain why they have to send that amount of money to uh, the county. And I know, and if you're not aware, Molten Burl is the biggest. Um, I won't say donor because I don't even want to use that word, <laughs> but it is a contributor to the county budget. Now, when we get together and we do, you know, every department does their thing and we, you know, we sit and we think everything is great and we, you know, we all want to do what's best for the county. And um, I want to see what's best for the county, but I think we have to really think about how responsible we have to be to individual towns, never mind the whole county. And Moultonboro pays almost 25 percent of the county budget, which is a lot, is a lot, and only because of our assessed value. And I know that I'm going to be called in. I'm going to be called in, maybe, and Representative Cordella and Representative Marsh to explain to them why we're going to send that much money. So I, I would just ask you to think about where we could cut some. I don't want to slash this budget to bare bones, but I really want to, when I go back to my selectmen, I want to be able to tell them exactly why we're contributing that much money or whatever the bottom line is going to be. Thank you. Well, I think you've already said it. The reason you're contributing that much is you have probably the highest equalized value of yes, any do. of the towns, mm -hmm. and that's why. Um, it's not is it right? Well, well, it's the same as we have for school funding. <laughs> is it right? Is it right? <laughs> well, the same, excuse me, we, we, we also have the same issue that the actual tax rate in your community is lower yes. than the exactly. tax rate in our communities that have lower tax values. Mm. Those people are paying percentage-wise more. Yes. I, I come from a high property value I community as well. Mm -hmm. But I also recognize that I know that the other communities Struggling harder than you are. And I think that that in the past three years we haven't raised taxes. We we we've, we've kept it flat. We've used fund balance. And maybe that was the wrong thing to do. Maybe incrementally, it sh should have kept going up, and then it's not such a big hit. 
but when you, you know, when you artificially keep it low, I mean, that's what happens. And so you either use more fund balance or you incrementally raise it every year. So that, or you get more revenue. <laughs> Yes, um, I would like to amend my motion and add a finance manager uh, for $38,000 based on a July 1st hire date and uh, the associated uh, uh, line items related to that salary and uh, also an HR director uh, for $38,000 with a July 1st start date and the associated um, uh, line items related to that salary as well. Is there a second to that motion? Um, yeah, I don't know where we're going to put them. I mean, you know, we're short of office space, too. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, 70, 76000 is, is a good place. Yes, Just a clarification, thank you. Um, to Representative Cordell, are you adding that to the 31? Yes. Okay, thank you. disagree with putting these together in one motion and the reason is I think they're really extremely different issues. Somebody may be in favor of adding a finance manager and an HR person but not in favor of putting the budget or vice versa and I do not think that these should be together as one motion. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask Representative Cordelli if this motion includes using those positions to replace the HR assistant position and the administrative assistant position. That are currently in the budget. Correct. It does. Yes. Thank you. That clarifies it for us. Yes. Madam Chair, I would suggest that if that's the intention, that that be included in the amendment. Because I would be open to amending my amendment. Um, Excuse me, could we, and, and just, just, um, I think that we're, what we're doing is we're, we're moving around a lot of lines, yes. and I think we need to make a decision on some of the lines before we, as, as somebody said, but we're putting, as Representative Kinnert said, they're, they're, we're getting into two or three different issues here. Number one, we're reducing the budget by a significant amount. Um, and number two, then we're, we're starting to add and replace staff. 
And I think that we, if we try to do that as one vote, there are people who might feel differently. And I think that's an issue that we should probably separate that out. Um, so since you have made both, can I ask you to make to amend to make one or the other that we can deal with and then go I would, to the uh, next one? And I would leave it to your choice. Which you would yeah, I would motion. withdraw my previous motion. I'll withdraw my second. And substitute uh, an amendment for the uh, HR director uh, addition to the budget at $38,000, July 1st start date, and uh, increases to the associated uh, salary lines for that position. Um, and this uh, position would be in place of the uh, uh, HR assistant that was originally proposed. And I will reset. Okay, now, but are these still part of the reducing the budget to Correct. 30? Correct. This would be... This is a separate motion? No. No, no this no, is an you're, amending, you're, amendment you're, to the original motion. You're amending motion. to that 32 and a half. Yes. I'm sorry, to clean this up, I really think it would be best if we withdrew all the motions on the table and start out with some clean <coughs> motions that are not all linked together with different topics. And we uh, could take one at a time. The motion on the floor of Knark is to have an HR uh, professional for 38.6. The yeah. corresponding numbers of 2420, 4500, and $500. Respectively, I'm sure they'll change because I don't know the exact um, numbers off the top of my head. I'm just using the... Uh, we have a motion for 38. Just using the victim witness numbers that are here for FICA retirement Medicare. But it's as approximate. That's approximate. <coughs> sure. But is it clear? Because it was not clear to me. I thought you said it's an amendment, so I thought it was amending the reduction in the budget. And that's why I'm asking that we yes. just the clean this all off by starting out so with a fresh, clean motion so we all know what we're talking about. This would be an amendment to my original motion. Replacing it, in, replacing it in its entirety, then? Replacing it in its entirety. No this, no, this is an amendment to my original motion to reduce the uh, uh, budget levels, the budget appropriation to the 2018 levels. Right, so, so it isn't just to add the 38,000. That's what I said. There's confusion at the yeah, table. There is confusion. I really believe that this is a not productive. And we should withdraw all previous motions and start with one motion that deals with one thing rather than having this convoluted mess because it's unclear. Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. If the uh, member wants to move forward with this motion, then I think we should do it, most, uh, uh, vote it down, and then start over. Yep. Yes, that's fine to me. Okay. Is there any more discussion? All right. We'll do a roll call vote. All those in favor of the motion. So actually, can you repeat that? What is the motion? Because uh, it's unclear. We have to point of order. Yes. I believe we have to vote on the amendment first, first. and then if it passes, vote. Okay. All those in favor. Wait, wait, wait. Clarify, <laughs> please. We had a problem in the last meeting of people not knowing what they're voting on. Can you clarify what is it we're voting on? What is the amendment? I will have our clerk. Yes. Clarify the amendment. The amendment is to add an HR position of $38,000 with the corresponding lines of 2420, $4,500 and $500 for associated costs. Um, as per Representative Butler, the, the motion has to be a positive motion. However, if you do not agree with this motion, I would suggest you vote now. And it's to, the, to start it on July 1st. And it will start July 1st. Is everyone clear? And if they're clear that this is an amendment to the original, this so that we still can come back to this. Right, so we can still come back to this topic for us to assess the motion. We are only voting on the amendment. Representative Ticehurst? No. Clerk will vote yes. Representative Butler? Yes. Representative Waddell? Yes. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Como? Yes. Representative Connick? No. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Burroughs? No. Representative Campbell? No. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Woodcock? No. Representative uh, Sarah Chair? Yes. Eight. Five motion passes. Amendment passes. Amendment passes. Amendment. Said, yeah, amendment passes. Which is what again? Eight. Eight. Five. 
Thank you. Um, the reason I voted in favor of the First Amendment was because uh, that position makes sense to me. And I suppose the second position makes sense to me, but it is getting too confusing and convoluted. I think we need to start over. So um, uh, my vote on the Second Amendment will reflect that. I agree. I still think the idea of cutting the budget and adding these two people are totally <coughs> separate questions that should not be linked in one budget. Yes. So I will vote no. No. Discussing the motion, right? That we're doing. We th this is th the motion right now is on the floor is to accept the lower. Uh, right, that's what we're discussing. 2018 level. That's what we are discussing. Okay. We're discussing that. Yes. yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, I guess the question to the chair. Uh, perhaps you may want to refer it to the motion maker. If our intent or the intent of uh, the board was to ask for a zero base budget. Then why didn't you do that four months ago? And why don't we provide a zero-based budget instead of have the commissioners, department chairs, and administrators, and all of us go through that, knowing that was our intent? Um, you asked, I'm assuming, for a budget that's going to be a needs-based budget, because that's what I heard, a needs-based budget, and that's what's presented. 
I'm just curious why the, we're taking a 100% different perspective on the last minute. Well, I'll address it to the chair. I wasn't here. I, that's okay. Uh, that was, was not my, I did not make that motion. Uh, my personal feeling is that if we artificially keep keep holding to a zero-based budget, we're going to run into the same problem that we're running into now. We're hitting a wall where, where the needs are growing and we're having difficulty responding. Um, I have a concern. I have a, a letter here I'm going to pass out that I signed yesterday along with all of the other Power County um, all the state delegation chairs to send to the finance committee because there are some issues of talking about changing the share of Medicaid that will be that is going to be asked of the counties to increase our percentage. Is that the two percent? It's in the budget. Some of them are much higher at a higher rate, at a five percent rate. So some of our costs things are going up, and I think my answer to my taxpayers would be. We held the line and held the line and held the line, and now our needs are reaching a point that we have to respond. To. And it's not something we want to do. But I don't. I agree that I find it frustrating that this is coming now on the last day, on the fourth meeting on this budget. Actually, I can't claim this today. I guess just to but, clarify, but my question is, was: but why, but, the delegation that whoever voted this or directed directed the administration to present this budget. The commissioner's budget. Okay. The commissioner's budget. Then why was it not why were they not informed at that point that that's what you're looking for? I think it's, it's yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think I might just try to um, clarify the process. So the commissioners are directed to um, prepare their budget by statute. So they're required by law, and there's nothing in there that says how they prepare it or what their intent is or anything like that. So those, we refer to that as a budget, and I think in one, maybe two places in statute, it, they do use the word budget, but in most places it's a recommendation. So they're just directed to make their recommendations, and they do that by consulting with the department heads who say, by tradition, um, not by law, this is what we think we need to do to run our programs effectively. So when it comes to the delegation, um, the delegation can do whatever they want with it. They can decide to do needs based. They can decide to you know hold the line, um, whatever they want. Um, and at any point until we finalize it, we can change our um, ideas of. What, um, what approach to take. But I would just say that as far as functioning well as a group together, it's probably a really good suggestion that um, we have a conversation next year at the beginning of the cycle um, to talk about what our different budgeting philosophies are and what our different goals are um, so that we don't get to this point where we're under a lot of pressure and feeling like we're making decisions that um, we can't justify well. So I hope that's helpful. I, I th and thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, Representative Tyson, I thank you for the clarification. I, I understand, I understood, I thank you for the clarification of the process. I was more thinking of that, that end of your comments about why this delegation at that time didn't sit with the commission and say, this, as a group, this is what we'd like you to look forward to because this is where we're going. It just seems like we're putting the cart after the horse. Yes. That's all. Yeah. But I agree, I agree with the, 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 that's all, that was my question, yeah. yes. why it was never I, done. I so I historically it's never been done, we always put the cart after the house. It's something yeah. to think about. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, to be clear, the delegation has no authority to tell the commissioners what kind of budget we want to receive. We have no authority to tell them what recommendations we want to receive. But internally, as a group, it would be a better process if we all had that conversation before we started our subcommittee meetings. One yes. more follow-up. I, I understand that, except for when you start your subcommittee meetings, they already brought the document forward. I would think you'd go back one more step, so before they started, that you had a collegial meeting, everyone, this is where we like to go and 
and totally get some off record from the administrator of the department. This is where we need to go, and there. So you have, a, so you have. I just hate to see all this time and effort put in, and now we're fighting about dollars versus quality programs, which should have been nailed around. Thank you. I'm done. That's, that's all right. I appreciate it. Thank and you. I share. We can start a new tradition. Okay. Thank you. But I do believe in sitting through the meetings that we sat through. I do remember very distinctly pushing to keep it as low as we could. What is the real need? And I was really actually impressed by our department heads who were willing to come in and say, we have to do it this way. I'm sorry, but you know, I really need this. I, we really need this because our numbers are up, because this has happened, because this has happened. This piece of equipment was, we were holding it together with scotch tape. We really need to replace it. I mean, we were hearing from people. I. I do not believe, at least in the meetings I sat in, that anyone was asking for frivolous things. I think that there, there, there have been some maintenance and things that have been deferred, and you reach a point and it has to be done. And you reach a point when that copier just isn't going to work anymore. We, and unfortunately, there are some people who are sitting in this spot right now when some of that is happening. Um, I think that we need to be reasonable. Yes, Representative and also, um, Thank you. Um, uh, there is a lot more to the process, especially in an election year, where we're not sworn in until, I think it's after the statutory date, when they have to uh, submit a proposed <coughs> budget to DRA. Um, and um, uh, one problem for me um, this year has been, um, through our subcommittee, um, we submitted a list of uh, 20 questions, and uh, it was just uh, uh, two or three weeks ago um, that we got uh, answers to about half of it. So um, this year, uh, for me, um, been here. This is my seventh year. Um, information that has always been provided to us in the past um, has not been provided this year which I think has uh, greatly complicated um, our deliberations and process. And um, you know, I'll speak for myself. <coughs> uh, yeah, I, I just would like to second though what Representative Woodcock said, and that is that even without having all that information, the number we've come up with is basically a level budget. And I think still early on, when we first met, if that was an expectation, even though it was after the statutory deadline that they would have had a proposed budget in, that we could have stated that again, as Representative Woodcock said, before any of the subcommittees began their work, so that we would all be working toward the same goal and not reach a point um, about 10 days before we want to have this done, where we may be going back to completely redo everything. This is not an efficient way to do it. Yes. And Madam Chair, I might just want to remind the delegation that a nursing home is unlike any other business. Most businesses, when they have increased costs, can have increased charges. Medicare is already threatening to reduce what we get paid under Medicare A. That takes effect on October 1st. Medicaid, which is the bulk of our receipts, are actually controlled by you in terms of how much money the Department of Health and Human Services get. We can't get more money to level fund after we've had a number of years where the average health care cost, uh, health provider cost, has gone up over 7% per year, and we've always been at half or less than that. It's, you're affecting lives. And I'm not talking about the staff, I'm talking about, about the residents. We're struggling now to staff the place. If we're not able to increase our, our pay rates, we're going to have fewer staff, and we're going to have reduction in quality of care. One of your responsibilities is, you know, being in charge of the nursing home, being in charge of the House of Corrections. It's a people business. And I, I'd ask you to give that careful consideration as you decide whether or not cutting the budget makes sense. Yes, and I would, I would uh, agree with that, that that is a, a very important issue, plus it ends up ultimately costing us more when we try to do it on the cheap and have to hire um, contract nurses and so on to fill in. If I remember right, in the jail budget, the extra nurse, which has been talked about being cut, 
was to also again prevent us from having to pay overtime, which is much for agency nurses that are much more costly. And we have seen deferred maintenance. The we have this responsibility to replace, or sorry, to preserve the records, which we have not been investing in. And uh, the generator is a good example of something that probably should have been dealt with before it died. But you can't simply not take care of your property and your people and your job year after year and not expect it to come back and hit you sometime with an increased rate to, to catch up on what you have to do. Um, I agree with um, Representative Knurr, and I think it's, I, I, all of our constituents don't want to see their taxes go up, but I think it's our job to go back to them and explain why we're doing what we're doing, and as, you know, I think Howard just made a good case for, you know, the cost of the nursing home, right? But it's our job to explain that to our constituents and say why we can't go back in time to, uh, you know, a lower budget. Are there any other comments? Yes, Representative Don. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm just trying to figure out how much money did they give back they not spent last year? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know yet. We don't know until the other stuff. Are we talking, what, what would you, an estimate be? Is it a million dollars, two million dollars, 500,000, or just looking at the books itself? Well, probably have like a million. That's right, that was a million that was what? Plus? Surplus. Uh, about a million going back in, in 18. Right. Thank you. Um, at some point in the past few weeks, I've heard you say 2.1. Um, and so you're talking a million in 18, but there's more surplus in addition to that? Well, with the, with, with the increase to the, uh, uh, to the pro share, that, that's not counting that. That was uh, 300,000. You know, that, that's just a quick look. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what, what's the final number in the quick look? I heard 11 million and I heard 2 million. No, 1.3. 1. 1. 1. 1. 3. 1. 3. Around there, yeah. Around 1.3. If, if you add in the, uh, if you add in the pro share, um, but we, we did send some of that back, so, uh, you know, I... But we're supposed to get back in the break. Right, we, we got the, we, we, we budgeted 1 million, we got about 1.5, we sent back about a hundred thousand. So uh, yes, thank you. Uh, the pro share money and the money we sent back should be included in this. Because we did a supplemental budget in September. Um, some people forgot about it, but we did a supplemental budget in December. So those figures should be reflected in here. Um, the actual uh, dollars in terms of in terms of revenue, was $31.5 million for 2018. The expenditures were under 29.5. So that's over uh, 2.1 million, according to these worksheets that has been provided by the county to us. Unaudited, but that's the numbers that they were provided to us. There is a motion on the floor to reduce the budget to 2.13. I think that's the motion. Is there any further discussion? Yes. I believe it's a motion as amended, so it's yes. to reduce as the budget plus to add the two, two positions. One position. One position. One position. The one position. The one position. The one position. The 38. No.
amendment fails as well. Yes. You're back to zero. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I understand the concern that people have uh, raised about uh, such a significant increase in the overall budget. And uh, next week, we don't have to go to Concord. <laughs> so I am willing to do. We're, we're going for two days. Well. Yes, that's because you haven't gotten your work done. No, it's because we're starting the Senate bill. It's because we are starting the Senate bill. Uh, we're having hearings on Senate bills. So if it is possible, um, I would uh, uh, reconvene the uh, nursing home subcommittee and uh, see where we might be able to uh, reduce that budget, uh, both on a needs base and on a concern relative to the overall budget. Cost. Um, it seems to me that some people who were who are on that subcommittee, who supported the motions that we made in that subcommittee, and now are willing to take an overall uh, uh, axe to the um, to the general budget, uh, um, have a responsibility to go back and look at those pieces and determine how we want to uh, deal with it. And if we again agree that uh, the budget that we have proposed is reasonable, um, then uh, I see no reason to make uh, further changes. Yes. The, there's always using a little more fund balance. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying offset at all, but if, if you use 1.5 million, it only ups it 5.6%. 5, 5 I mean, it's not such a huge increase. I think also that. Why don't we take your I thought earlier when this uh, meeting started, we had heard from the administrator that uh, we might be in this position with this large increase because we've used surplus in the past to uh, reduce the amount uh, raised by taxes. Mm -hmm. But now we're hearing that uh, maybe we should use more surplus to. Uh, uh, to mask the uh, spending increases. So I'm confused. Looking for close. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to clarify. So if, 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 you, if you subsidize the increase every year with fund balance, then you're going to have an issue. But if you subsidize it responsibly, say 5%, you know, each year, it, it, it's not such a huge increase. And, and, and it doesn't artificially inflate it. Uh, Fourteen percent. If you want to not use any fund balance. Yes, I can't support a motion to use more than eight hundred fifty-nine thousand four hundred ninety-nine dollars of fund balance because that will cut the fund balance down to the minimum uh, that DRA recommends. Can you repeat that number. Uh, eight five nine four nine nine. It's on the sheets of the small, 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 small. one sheet. And I would like to say I think we dug ourselves in the hole by not increasing the taxes to inflation or to, to a reasonable amount. And as much as I would know what I'm going to be called, <laughs> um, but I think that, that we should responsibly do at least some increase in taxes to, to help account for what the true costs are, because it's going to just fall on those who are here next year. Or well, two years from now, that they're going to get whacked again because they have not maintained. I think the, the things that are truly important in this budget, and I think we all did a good job working hard at it, trying to cut where we could. I, I think if we balance at least some of the taxation and some of this, rather than hitting everybody at once in the first year, with setting the goal to get it caught back up, to get it straightened out to more reasonable amount, might be better for our constituents. I would like to move that we would go ahead and approve the budget that we uh, have on our sheet today, which is the product of our work over the last few months of $33,180,506, uh, which was the numbers that we have come up with. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask what uh, figure from the fund balance we're using in the motion that you just made. I would be glad to actually yes. clarify that and say utilizing a and I'm sorry and utilizing 
a fund balance from surplus of 859,499. So that would be the full amendment. Can we have a second to that motion? I think well, I, I was actually changing the motion. Is that acceptable or yeah, we cannot do that? Okay. Can we have a second to that motion? Representative Burles. Thank you. And for the clarification, Madam Chair, we're talking about expenditures, not revenue. Yes. Thank you. So the, with the motion, did you, does it now include the 859 that I said or just the 31? Yes. We're talking about expenditures, not revenue. Okay, fine. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. That number again is 30, $33,180,506. Is that correct? Yes, that's what's on the page. Right. Yes, sir. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Um, yes. The, the amendment, I understand the amendment is done, but Representative Cordelli's amendment for the HR position was supported by a majority of people at the table. So if the majority of people at the table believe that that is a significant position that's going to impact the budget, I'm just asking if that should not be in there or there should be a change in the numbers. Um, if, if, that's, if that's the goal, I mean, if the goal of Representative Connex is to go back to the HR position, um, adding it in, if that's, if that's what they believe is important, then there should be adjusted. Would, just, would, a, just a question for discussion. I would welcome that as an amendment. Yes. Uh, we have another point. Yes. Okay. In order to not muddy the waters, yes, sir. We can make recommendations. If it's not going to be an amendment, if it's just open for discussion, um, if people are going to put forward an amendment, please make it clear so we don't we don't get backed up like we just were. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you. Uh, I would prefer, and I'm not even sure if I am ready to support it, but I would prefer to have the uh, clear expenditure amount um, and then if we are going to add uh, additional uh, positions or take away additional money, that that be something uh, separate. Okay. Um, and if I could, um, I, well, I guess we will find out, but um, we have reviewed this budget. Um, we have uh, uh, gone through each department and uh, approved um, these totals, um, and yet it is a significant, significant <coughs> increase, and I'm wondering if there is a way that we can reduce it responsibly. Um, and uh, we still have time to do that. So uh, uh, before we take a uh, vote on this amendment, I would wonder if others are willing to work on their pieces of the budget or um, do we need to just move ahead and uh, um, deal with the budget as it is? Um, I'm going to take an odd position and say that I've pretty much agreed with everything everyone has said. <laughs> uh, I, we, we're going to, we're going to, I feel we're going to have to come out of this with some sort of increase because it has been offset for too long. I agree with what Anita said. It's like a business, you expect increases. If I was a business owner and my people came back to me and told, said there was going to be a 12% increase in operation costs, I would say, no, there's not, right? I can't justify that to the people of the knowledge of that. We do need, I agree with that. I think that we should, we've got time. Most of us have time. I think we should try to schedule a couple things, do run-throughs, see what we can come up with. Um, has anyone done a run of what, if, if we use this eight? $859,499, what would that reduce the percentage increase by? Yes, yes. Yeah, it is it's here. It's all right here. I, I, oh, you didn't grab it when you came in? Uh, <laughs> it's 9.5%. Yeah. 
So it would bring it to 9.5%? Yes. And then if we then look through the things, it would reduce how much we need to reduce things by that way we're not getting ourselves too far on the other end. Yeah. It's still 12.4. Yeah. It's, still 12 .4. Yeah. Yeah. it's not a 9.5. Right. In reality, it's still 12.4. Right. Uh, right. I, I, okay. I, I can carve out the time. We're not going to be, I'm not, I don't have any commitments in Crawford next week. I, if, if Representative Marsh were, has the time to arrange our subcommittee again, I can be there. I have committees in the, on Monday and Tuesday. I have to introduce two bills to the Senate on Tuesday. Uh, we have committee Wednesday as well. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday is when I have to be there. Oh, okay. And I, I don't remember what's happening on Thursday. We don't have a second <laughs> on Thursday? No. 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 So, we, we, so that would mean Monday, Thursday, and Friday I would have a bill. Representative Tyser. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I am the chair of the Multi One Budget Committee, and I also have commitments in Concord, but I would be willing to recall that committee back on Friday to take another look. And I will state that I personally saw very small but real um, increases that were not based on any fact or figure, but merely as a starting place for discussion. And I would be happy to revisit those small um, items, appro small appropriations, um, because I agree with some of my colleagues here that um, I just agree with that. Could I suggest I just had a thought? We are here. Could we break into small groups and look at Yes, that's a good idea. We're, Let's we're all, all spend here. A half an we hour. don't have to drive. It's December. Come any place I have to be. I'm, I'm out of here at 3:30. You're out of here at 3:30. It's only 2:25. Yep. Even if we took 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes, and if we come back with and come back with some, back some, back with some suggestions, is that fine? Makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, of course. Yes. Thank yes, you, Commissioner. Thank you. I'm thinking, I have sat through every single one of the subcommittees. And I have been tremendously impressed with the amount of thought, the amount of homework, and the amount of work that each person has put into the subcommittee. And I think that you can probably meet for the next hundred days and come up with maybe, maybe a thousand dollars. But then some of you on re-examination, I think you're going to find that there are pieces where you should have added more than you did. So, in my opinion, as a mathematician and a teacher, is you can meet as much as you want, but it's not going to shape anything significant. And as has already come up today, it may increase another 100,000. But you have all done a fantastic job. Thank you very much. Yes. Just to let everyone know, if this isn't ratified by by Friday, next Friday, it, um, it automatically goes to the commissioner's recommendation. So, a week from Friday, right? To what? Right. It automatically goes to the thirty-three million to what the commissioner is default proposed, which is less than what the yes. I I actually tend to agree with uh, Commissioner Bavard. I really don't think, because I think we did do very good work. Uh, we've also heard about the, about a $1.2 million, roughly, it was an increase already accounted for contractually, uh, as Representative Tyser has commented, propane, electricity, all those <coughs> things went up. We've taken all that into account, and I do believe that Commissioner Bavard is right, we can meet from now till the cows come home, and we're not going to have significant changes unless we decide we're going to cut programs continue to defer maintenance, not uh, uh, preserve the records of the deeds, all those other things which have already been neglected, we'll have to go back to neglecting them again. And also, I should say, the, the information that we know about um, the needs of the nursing home in terms of the care of the people and also the extra costs we incur when we don't have appropriate staffing because of the agency nurses and so on. So I, I think this is fruitless to go back and start the process over again. Thank you. Just a comment and a question. Uh, I think the administrator said there's $900,000 of 
contractual raise in the, in the contract. Yes. So if we're made in faith by the prior delegation, the prior commission, whoever made it. <coughs> I think we have an honor to uphold that. But that's that's a contract. Um, and then the 1.2, which now you're at 2, 2.1. If if the concern the concern generated I hear is the interest, the percentage of increase, the dollar of increase, but not the reason for the increase. Um, I would be more comfortable uh, allowing the administration to listen, who has listened to a dialogue, to go back to his organizational people and bring back uh, suggestions for alterations. Because they work in it, he has, he's hearing the philosophy of what we're talking about. He knows what the concern is. He knows the balance of the vote is one vote either way, depending what it goes. I mean, really, it's eight, seven, seven, eight, nine. What is it? One or two votes. Um, I would be much more comfortable allowing the professional people who understand the internal work in the budget, who've heard the dialogue, to come back with a recommendation. If it comes back where it is, so be it. But there, then we can make a decision up and down. Where they may, he may, they may say, you know what, this is not going to fly. Let's not take it. Let's. This is where we have to. Um, and I'd rather have the professional people who work in the field give us their recommendation of reductions than just us sitting around. That's just me. Thank you. If memory serves me correctly, which doesn't all, um, uh, I think several years ago we did ask the commissioners um, to. Uh, to look at the budgets and come back to us with a, uh, I forget the percentage, um, uh, reduction uh, in the departments. And I believe, maybe, correct me, that they declined uh, to do that. Um, when was that? Well, our administrators, I know personally, I feel they, they know better than we do what their needs are and where if they found they had to trim a certain amount, I would rather it come from the administration and the department heads than for us to sit here and say what they can live without and what they can. Um, I almost, <coughs> you know, I would like to do that. We still have a motion to take The motion, we're still in discussion. Yes. If, uh, I'm hoping you're not talking about my comments, uh, Commissioner, because I wasn't worried about the heat. I was trying to ask the administrator, hearing the intent, um, instead of throwing the baby in the bathwater out, there may be more suggestions. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah, well, the suggestions are one thing, but I tell you, Representative, that I think the stove is off and the water is boiling, and I've heard about five of you say that you can't go back to your district. You've not heard me say that. I'm asking for professional advice. Okay, I'll buy that. Thank you. Can I just say yes. one thing, Representative Croft? So I, I, I was just throwing out numbers, and I, I think my math is okay. I'm not a mathematician, but I. <laughs> I so it, Representative Cordelli went to 31 million 419 444. And we have a contractual agreement. I put nine hundred thousand dollars that we've already that everyone's agreed on Most for contracts, and so that comes to like twenty uh, thirty two million three nineteen four four four. And the difference between the thirty three one eight zero and the thirty two three one nine four 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 is like eight hundred and sixty one thousand one hundred and sixty two dollars. <coughs> so. 
Is there a compromise? I mean, can we find a compromise yeah. that we can all be happy with? I don't. I don't know. I'm just. May, may I? May I respond? Yes. The nine hundred thousand did not include the associated costs, which we talked about, probably about a ballpark of three percent, or about another three hundred thousand. So it actually, you wouldn't just add nine hundred. You should be adding about one point two million. Um, that also does not include the gas or the propane, which are the costs that we all agree are we have no control over. I think you're, the work you're doing is perfectly appropriate, and I think if we add all these little bits in, we find that we get pretty darn close. Yes, I think we probably should move the question at this point. Uh, which would you like to use another we were, we were with? 33,180,506, as stated on your page 22 of your expenditure sheets, motion to approve. Motion made by Representative Kennard, seconded by Representative Burroughs. I made a full sentence. I heard a, a figure. The motion to approve. I made a full sentence. Your motion, your, your number is on this page, page yes, 22. I see the number. The motion was made by Representative Kennard, seconded by Representative Burroughs. The motion was to approve a, appropriations of this amount. Expenditures. Yes. Expenditures of this amount. That's what I need. I need the full sentence. Madam Chairman, I just ask a question also. May I just clarify one thing? Yes. We would then have to, if we want to then move into the, at the figure of 859,499, that would be a separate motion after this is done. Right. Yes. Just for completeness related to that other discussion, and I think my math is roughly ballpark right, the difference between the 31,419 and the 33,055 is roughly 1.6 million, of which accounted 900 million by the contractual increase, about 30% for the usual Benny package, is about 1.2 million, the propane and so on, probably being a few hundred thousand propane electricity. And those numbers get us really quite close. So if we take a level budget at the cost that we have no control over, we end up at pretty darn close to the number that is on page 22. What's pretty darn close? The, the, and the 31 plus the 1.2 plus the propane, which might be and electricity, which is a couple hundred thousand dollars, because the difference between those is only a rounding 1.6 million. And we already have 1.2 by contractual increase because we don't, we have to pay their associated costs and Denny's, and we have the propane electricity. No, it was, it was discussion on it because I think simply you're asking a compromise. If we take the level funding and we add to it the fixed cost that we already said, contractual plus propane electricity only, we're extremely close to the number that's on page 22. So I've not changed the motion. I'm still staying with that motion. I, I thought you sort of called the question. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't call the question. Somebody, somebody I, did I, I, I think I'm right. sorry. I was... Yes. I, we're still discussing the yeah. budget and what we're doing, and we're starting with the amount of the motion, and I, I think that we could get to a million. Yes. A parliamentary inquiry. So um, if, we, if I vote yes, that means that I am approving this bottom line, this figure, and we will not be adding in the HR positions. Mm -hmm. That's right. We could still go back and do that. Right. That's why I'm. We could. What I understand, the, the motion that is on the floor is. It's to approve the budget that we have. And, and uh, I feel that, that there could be an amendment that would bring us closer to what, we, what others wanted. May I respond to that? Yes. I just gave that rough math. I, I think that one can't. If you take a level funding and you take the contractual costs, including benefits, and I mean, in, in the jail alone, the propane went up um, from 90 to 122. There was a 30% increase there over the budget from one to the other. And as a result, uh, if we take all the other departments, look at their propane electricity, we find that there's a substantial amount there. That's why we did all this work before. And what I'm trying to say is that 
the three thirty-three million is not out of whack if you take the level funding and the other things we have no control over, broken electricity, contractual agreements, because we've already made the contract, that I don't think we need to compromise any further between the two because it, the numbers are realistic, personally. Madam Chair, I think we're wasting time. I moved yes. the previous question. Okay. okay. Point. We have, can you get a clarification of the administrator? Right. Maybe give me information you could use. Point of yeah. order, the uh, motion on the floor is not debatable. Are we using Robert's rules for Masons? We're, we're using Masons. Using, oh. Somebody said call the question, and that's not Masons. But that's okay. Previous question is Masons. I have it right here in my hand, and I just looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Yeah, so okay. it's, so it's just, I was going to work with you. I don't know. I don't know. No, but it's just a sad, sad day when a, a member can't get a clarification for his question. I think it's also not debate if the, if he's clar if the administrator's clarifying something. That's not debate, is it? I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Could be yes, Do you have so. an answer for that? It's a rule of here. No. I think we can have a clarification. Yeah, but people, I want people up. to know what they're voting on. Yeah. And, and so when you talk about clarific, um, when you talk about um, contractual obligations, don't forget the uh, Siemens contract that, that we just signed. It's 135000 that we have to pay. Which is in the budget. Right. Which is in the budget. Right. That's it. So, but I understand for the discussion that we are on, I'll just discuss on the budget of 33 million. Okay, maybe we'll take a five-minute break. Thank you, Thomas. And if we're doing that, do you want to caucus, caucus or a break? We caucus. Well, then, okay, don't, don't. Okay, don't, yeah, I'm sorry. Right. 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 You're right. I wish I did. I mean, we don't need to be said to get this to the team. Okay, I'm sorry, personal question. You're saying. The answer is yes. Now, we can vote for something. Um, I use ease. I think all your hands are vote on it. No, but it can be made as a motion which is non-debatable and votable, which ends this debate, and then we have to vote on the... I didn't. I thought of moving the previous question just brought the previous question. But no, no, what do I know? When gets the vote on that? We haven't gone. So... Can we do a yay or nay? We could. I'm willing to withdraw that motion, Madam Chair, if you'd like to do so. Yeah, let's... Let's just... Okay, why don't we do that? I'll withdraw the motion for the previous question. Drain that bucket to keep doing that. Would you like me to withdraw my previous motion as well, that we can move on with a new motion? I would be glad to withdraw my previous motion of the 33... Thousand million, is that correct? Um, so before that, you have a second from Representative um, Barbos. Are you drawing a second? Yes. So now the table is clean. Now the table is clean. Okay. Please, Madam Chair. Yes. Madam Chair, um, I will move and then would like to comment on my motion um, to reduce the proposed budget. To thirty two million two hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and seventy five to include the reduction of the money in the budget on the archival restoration. Uh, thirty two two ninety nine nine seventy five. And that should include the budgeted amount for archival restoration. What was that? Yes. Mm -hmm. 32,999, 275? 975. And if I could speak to the motion? Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the second. I'm sorry. Um, I am uh, not happy to make this motion because I feel, as I said earlier, it's incumbent upon all of us to have come to 
a responsible budget um, without having to make wholesale reductions. Um, however, we're here, um, and I'm not, I don't agree with the uh, full reduction to the 2018 level, um, and so the uh, Democratic Caucus uh, agrees to uh, reduce uh, by half the difference between the proposed budget and the 2018 budget. Um, that is what uh, this uh, total amount does. It takes out uh, 880,531, which is half of the difference um, between the 2018 and the 2019 budget. Um, furthermore, the uh, caucus uh, believes that uh, the money for archival restoration, although um, uh, something that would be nice to do, is certainly not something that we believe is necessary. And so uh, we want to include that within that reduction. Yes. Uh, if I can just ask you a question, sir. So, so that'll include all the uh, required ways, uh, ra raises and propane and all that stuff in that, it would, that final number? It should include the all of the necessary uh, uh, increases. Yeah. Uh, can I speak to that? I, I'm sorry, what do we mean by the word it will include words. Will it include all the necessary increases? What do we mean by that? The contractual increases and uh, all of the pieces of the budget I where uh, necessary increases occur, like the propane. Um, I don't think that math would work out to do that. I, I, I mean, I, I agree with cutting, but it will not take the level fund of 2018 and add the contractual increases, propane, and electricity, because we already did that math. That ends up pretty close to the budget we came up with. We will still then have to cut some services and other issues, Agreed. which is fine. But, but it's important to understand that it does not cover the contractual increases, propane, and electricity. Right. My understanding is that the overall number will include all the necessary increases. Yes. I just wasn't uh, clear on uh, the discussion about the uh, archival project. That this proposed amount does or does not include the archival project, and if it does include it, how much is it including? May I, Madam Chair? Yes. Thank you. Um, my understanding is that there is a number of three hundred thousand uh, dollars for archival restoration, and uh, that. Uh, money would be uh, part of this reduction so that there would, that money would not be available for archival restoration. And for clarification, <laughs> then that means that would leave about $380,000 to be take, to be removed from the uh, budget, ex separate from the archival restoration. So in other words, all of the other budgetary issues would have to go down three hundred eighty. the process be we would um, approve this motion and that would be an agreement to reduce the proposed um, budget the overall and when and how would the line item reductions be made Representative though I can't speak with this with certainty but I would presume that the department heads and this um, and Ken would need to get together over the next couple of days and finalize where each of them, I mean, they could proportionally diminish it amongst each department, depending upon their portion of the budget, and each department head would have to figure out where they will get rid of something, and then they would have to bring that back to us, and we'd have to meet next week, probably Friday, to then finally approve the new budget. It would be helpful, of course, if those numbers were forwarded to us in advance so we can review it, not just a sheet like this, but with all changes in red, so we can look at it and see what the changes are appropriately. And I would assume the commissioners could participate. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. If I may ask Representative Kinnerick a question. Uh, however, we are not uh, requiring each department to reduce by a certain percentage. That would be the, would be 
the bottom line be the direction of the administrator and the commission. Is that correct? Yes, I think that's correct. Yes. That's Thank why you. I said yes. The my apologies. Involved because they might yes. Be, they might find that more. Yes. They may feel that the nursing home can't reduce it all, and that other ones well, can't. That'd be fine. Yeah, I agree, 100 percent. So. So, uh, if I may ask, what the total is? Six hundred and fifty-five. Is that what it no. was? Three hundred from the archival and another uh, five hundred eighty thousand. Uh, five hundred thirty-one. So to be five, the, the budgetary cut, other than the archival, would be five hundred eighty thousand five hundred thirty-one. So about a half million dollars. Thirty-one. That's a total of eight. But it's a total of 800. Right. 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 But, the, but the first 300 are achieved by getting rid of the archival okay. generation. Are there Just any further questions? Oh, Sorry. yes. yes. So, is it my understanding that if you're taking the 300,000 out of the archival records, that then she that's she's getting nothing? Yes. For this year. So for nothing, not even to the 60 that everybody. Well, that's did. something that we might be able to do with legislatively. Mm -hmm. but. Correct. You realize you're breaking the law. No, no. It, it, it basically means we're kicking the hand down the road again, but there has been discussion amongst a few of us that um, it may be a silly concept from the legislature to, uh, to, mean, to mandate that these all be preserved and original and that photographs or other digital techniques could be usable. And so we might try to change that statute, and then the counties would not be responsible for the millions of dollars. Yes. Thank you. Um, the other, the other reason of looking at the archival restoration for this year, um, it has no direct impact on services to people in the county. Thank you. Yes. I have to disagree because <coughs> those records are, the originals have to go to any court case. And if you don't have them, it does, it does affect the direction. Unless, unless we change that statutorily to say that a copy would suffice. That's not going to change. If you can get a change, that won't be until another year. True. Yeah. That's why I say we're kicking the can down the road. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, from my visit to the visits to the <laughs> deeds office, I have not seen any deeds or records that are going to deteriorate to the point of not being usable within the space of the next 12 months. I understand that we can't kick it down the road forever, but I believe we will be meeting our legal obligation. I, I think several people have to leave shortly, so. Yes. Sorry. Okay, are there any other questions? Would you like to read the motion? The motion is to approve the budget of $32,299,975. Thank you. Okay. Call the roll. Representative Tyson. Yes. Card will be voting no. Representative Butler. Yes. Representative Bordelli. No. Representative Crawford. No. Representative Como. Nay. Representative Knark. Yes. Representative Marsh. No. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative Kanzler. Yes. Representative McDonald. No. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Thank you. So we will meet again. We have Forrest. Representative. Um, if I could, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I would like to propose a motion that. Uh, approves, as Representative Cordelli had uh, recommended, the HR director at uh, 38000 starting on July 1st with all associated um, uh, costs relative to taxes and uh, benefits. Um, but I would also like to... Um, I would also like to uh, remove the HR assistant within the nursing home budget, um, which is currently budgeted at a salary of $32,300. And the associated costs. And the associated costs, yes. I don't know. No, this is not. What do you mean? Another revenue. Revenue. Yeah. yeah. Do you have one in the car? I 
Um, no, I don't. <laughs> what are you looking for? It has yellow. The bottom line number. Of, uh, of what? Um, the HR? The HR position at 38000 which is uh, it, it, the FICA retirement and Medicare um, I don't know uh, that we... I, I, I believe that uh, previously Representative Avalani has been using the uh, hmm? victims no. of this advocate no. as a guide in terms of those no. the salary no. costs $2,400, yeah, $4,500, $4, and $500. Great. And the associated numbers for uh, the nursing home position are listed, so... Right, that was Okay. Yeah. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? The question is, can we have the number on that? Uh, sure. The representative probably moved 38000 with associated costs for a new HR director and to remove the HR assistant from the nursing home for 32000 with associated costs. The difference is roughly about $5,000 uh, increase. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, if I could, Madam Chair, uh, Representative Alani, that uh, salary position for the nursing home HR assistant was 33300 Yeah, right. Not 32. 33 And the HR director position would start on July 1st. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is that being added on to the bottom line of 32299975? Yes. Uh, the difference between the budget. We had Yeah, the adjustments would have to be made. Yes, okay. So there would be a new budgetary number that would be at about 5K. Are there any further questions, discussion? Just a question. Yes. Is the uh, financial assistant currently in the budget? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So this this finance this finance office administrative assistant this is yes. this already in the budget. Mm -hmm. Right. This would have been additional. Worse than that. Thank you. Worse than that. Okay. 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 Yes. 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 Yes.
I think I know what we were looking for. That is that I would move that we would do the surplus to reduce taxes of 859499 as that is in keeping with our previous numbers that we spoke about that keeps us at the appropriate um, DRA request to I'll second that motion. The bulk balance. Thanks. You're shaking up. No, no, this isn't the taxes. This was the... The surplus to reduce taxes. The line item is 9500.007 on page 3. Of the top. Which gets us to this that we spoke about at the beginning. Although the numbers now are different from the percentage. Yes. Yeah. Um, typically, we would include the revenue numbers and then have a final number and then approve the amount um, to be raised by taxes okay, sir. Um, at a later date. So seeing as we've made adjustments, that, um, the number that I will be looking at is 14 million two two nine seven seven two, which does not include any amount to be raised by taxes according to the sheets. Am I correct? And I would second that. It was that correct though first? Is that correct? The fourteen million two two nine does not include the eight fifty six. I don't know where we are. I'm trying to keep up there. Maybe it was. Yeah. the revenue by the last page. Yeah. That's the total revenue. Before we get into what we raised the taxes. Fourteen two two nine seven seven two. Yes. Right. That includes nothing on for right nine five zero point zero zero seven. Right. Right. So I, I, I believe that Representative Knurk's motion is in order, and then that number would get added to the 14229772, right. and then we would approve that number. Not correct? Okay, fine. Yes. This is the question. Yes. Um, revenue is indicative of how much revenue the county takes, and the income from taxes is going to be the last number after we right. approve the changes next week. But you can all. But I'm not talking about the revenue from taxes. I'm talking about what we pull from the budget surplus. That's what I was moving. Yeah, we, we won't know until we won't know what we're going to. Or we will know. We do. Well, we certainly. Yeah. We do know. We, we, we have had an estimate that it would, 859 will keep us at right. what we would expect to be the balance that's required, fund balance that's right. required by DRA. So I'm, that's why I'm moving that, which is actually one of the line items that composes the final. Uh, revenue. Yeah. 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 So you want I think they're right because we did come up with a number. We just have to find out exactly the line items. Is what we're but that doesn't, to yeah. and that doesn't tell us what we're doing with taxes, right? No. Because that comes after that. We right. approve right. this number. <coughs> we have our expenses, and then we know our difference, and then we know our taxes. So I agree with you that we can't do the tax thing. Right. We can't do the tax, and we also shouldn't be using any fund balance to include the revenue. That's just offsets. Yeah, it's not additional revenue. Like, true. I agree. So, so revenue number of the actual dollars taken in by the county yes. is 14 million two two nine seven seven two, okay, which right. does not include the income from taxes which we would vote on at our, at our next meeting. Where yeah. after we get the finalized bottom line expenditure budget, we would be able to extrapolate what we need from taxes as opposed to revenue. Yeah, and and that's, that's, that's when we decide the budget balance as well. Yes. Uh, I don't know, I'd be, I'd be yes. jumping around. Everybody jumping around. around. So we throw in the revenue numbers are <coughs> indicative of just what yes. the county takes in as revenue. The taxes are something completely different after we subtract the expenditures, which we've just approved and we don't have a bottom line number for. We would subtract the revenues and then we would have our income from taxes to make up the short So I will withdraw my motion then, please. I, but, and I withdraw the second. But, 
Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just would like to know where on this revenue sheet that figure of 14 is Page six. On last page six. Last page all the way to the right. All the way to the bottom. Bottom, bottom, bottom. bottom. To the bottom. Right. Happy to make that motion. Yes, sir. <laughs> I will second. Thank you, Representative Is there any further discussion? No, Everybody has found it. Bottom of page six on the right hand side. Thirty-five seconds, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. taxes, um, I would like to see the bottom line yes. um, adjustments that we've made today, um, yes. and then at our next meeting uh, consider that amount to reduce uh, uh, amount to reduce for taxes. Yes. I agree, Representative Butler. That would be food budgeting and all. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. People have discussed the possibility of meeting next Friday because we have to give notice, although. If we if we recess again, no. but, but we have to... It's, yeah. it's not enough time. Let's do it as a recess then. We've done it three twice, we us do it a third time. Yeah, it's 59. We might have to say. If we, if we today's Thursday, if we notice it, how many days do we need? It has to be seven clear days. So if, if we print the paper tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's a little that's the, so that's seven days. And we need eight? It, it may so. be hard to get in the paper for tomorrow at this point. Right, and I'm not sure if I can get in the paper for tomorrow. Okay, right. so we Let's just do a recess. Recess. Yeah. recess. Sure. Should, should, should we do Friday? Friday just in case we run into a snag? We need an extra day? Need tomorrow Friday? No, 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 no. no. Next week. Next week. Like Thursday? I can't do Thursday. If we, the other issue is, do you want to do an evening meeting? It will not be long. And for some people, especially those who have child care issues, I, 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 I <coughs> Can everybody make it Friday evening? Is it there a uh, meeting here? I, yeah. I just want There's some on the floor that we also have, would have to have employees here as well. No, that's right. Yes. yes. Everybody yes. takes yes. in and have their schedules as well. Well, but why do you need employees? Young and Well, I, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> salary, anyway. He's salary. Okay. Just for yeah. salary. And the yeah. commissioners, I yeah. And I, I mean, I think. Having spoken to some of the delegations about how their process works, many of them do meet on weekends or, sat or, or evenings. I think that it's perfectly reasonable, and I think we should try to maximize our attendance. I think we should see if everybody around this table can be here on Friday night. Can everybody who's here now be I, here Friday I can, After 6.30. You're saying this, this Friday? Friday? No. 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 Not, not, not tomorrow. Friday. Next Friday. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, after okay. 6.30, of course. If we made it at 7 o'clock, does that give you time? I'll be coming from Plymouth, so I'll be a little late, but... I have to check my calendar for a second. It's going to be a brief meeting, right? Sorry? It's going to be a brief meeting. <laughs> 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 that's what they said today. I, I, I think that's our best option, because we're going to miss people if we do it in the day. Okay, so we so why are we 7.30 next week on Friday. I don't expect There's a question, why, why are we waiting until Friday if it's going to be a night meeting? Do you want to meet on a different I can no, I can make it on a Friday, but I, it's Friday night. Wednesday? But I, no. I, I, work to, I teach class Wednesday evenings, five to seven. Tuesday. How about Thursday? Tuesday, I could do that. Yeah. Thursday, I, I I'm going to be out of state. Yeah, yeah, I have a problem Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. I could do Tuesday evening. Yeah. Who knows? There's snow. 
Everybody's open Tuesday evening? What time? 7? Seven? Seven no, it's got to be, uh, yeah, I mean, I, what, what I work until 6.30, right. so. So 7 o'clock? Yeah, I, I, okay. I mean, I'll be a little late. 7 to the 26th. Wait, hang on. Yeah. Are you okay with it? Friday is the only day I can go. Can't get here Tuesday? There's going to always be one person. Yeah, this, sure. I mean, it's. But we might be trying to match them. Well, Friday work. Did Friday work for everybody? I could do Friday night. I'll just be a little late, but. Friday evening at 7.30? I, I definitely could make 7.30. Someone bring coffee. Are we talking the 29th yeah. or the 22nd? Yeah, we need you. We're going to come here next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring someone out. Not this Friday. Okay, Friday night at 7.30. Okay. And we have to complete our work, so we're going to have to be here until we're done. Yep. Yeah, so we're going to be last. very agreeable and work together, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are always agreeable. So Friday the 29th at 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Friday at 7.30, so we are recessing again. Yeah. This is going to be the longest meeting. Yeah. Is that the 29th? Yes, correct. You have your option, by the way. You didn't officially recess yet, did you? No. no. May I bring up a couple of ideas just for thought that we don't have to discuss now unless you want to? In 30 seconds or less. Yeah. Actually, before can Carol, could I seconds. just say, could, could we, we could make it 7 because people had some printer about and you'd just be a I'll little bit late. I'll just be late. late. I mean, but we could just make sure we don't vote till you get here. Uh, no. It's a half hour to Moldenboro, and then it takes me about 20 minutes to get here. So I'd be able to hear the discussion. Yeah, yeah you want to hear the discussion. 7.30. Okay, I thought you had an objection to it. Sorry. 7.30. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so really quick, here's a suggestion um, that I had several years ago, and its time might have come. And that we change the budget process next year a little bit. And all we would do is that when the commissioners have their um, hearings on the budget, we also have our hearings on the budget like the same time so that we sat in the room at the same time. Now we would make our decisions totally separately and we don't even have to have an official like meeting or anything. We can just notice it in case more of the forums show up. But the point is that we would hear the same information from the same people at the same time and we would have an opportunity to hear what the commissioners were concerned about and what they were thinking about and considering. And we didn't have to duplicate as much and I think we would have better understanding. Throwing it out there, if you don't like it, that's okay. We can talk later. Yep. And then um, the other thing is we do, by law, have the option of changing our fiscal year to a July 1st start. And the advantage of that is when you have new delegation members, which we all were new at one point, they have a chance to come and get to know the operations and get to know the situation and get used to their duties and conference before they have to learn all of these things too. And that there is a way of doing it so that you're not going to charge anybody more taxes, and nobody's going to get a bigger tax bill chunk or a smaller tax, tax bill chunk because of it. You can spread the, the bills out. So just for thought, I don't want to take the time in the meeting to discuss it now, but I'm happy to discuss it with anybody who wants. There can be another advantage that people talk about the administration is they do all the financial tax stuff yeah. in January and have to just come here for the business stuff. And then July, they're not putting both at once. And I, I had some other ideas for streamlining, but I think that that should be done at another time. Yeah, so we're, we're going to recess the meeting until Friday, a week from Friday, tomorrow at 7.30. Queer. Delegation, delegation room. Yep. I'll talk to the sheriff and make sure it stays unlocked in the toast.